Hello and welcome to SNR Tech Bytes. Today I want to talk about the Cooler Master Pi Case 40. I backed this on Kickstarter a couple of months ago. I just got it in the mail the other day. I'm pretty excited, so let's open it up and see what's inside. So it looks like we've got our case here. That's the VESA mount hardware, so if you actually want to mount this to the back of a monitor or something, you can just kind of pop these in pretty easy. And mount this to the back of, of your computer monitor. You've got a couple screws, and those look like some thermal pads. Uh, kind of cool, the instructions are actually printed on the box instead, so no extra paper. Uh, it's just kind of printed all right here together. And then there's a QR code on the bottom that takes you to their website where they also have, uh, they say 3D printable assets. I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, I believe this isn't officially released yet. I did find it on Newegg for $40. I'm not sure that's actually Cooler Master. Um, that should be available on their store soon, but uh, $40 is what I've been able to find it for so far. All right, let's take a closer look at the case here. So it's got a nice uh, TPU rim, so it's very sturdy to drops. Uh, one of the really unique things about this case is it actually does redirect all the I.O. Uh, to the side once your Raspberry Pi is inside. Uh, you still have access to a slot for ribbon cables to come out of if you need it, as well as a uh, spot to slot the SD card in. All your I.O. here on the side, and then you can access all the I.O. on the front. So if we pop this guy open, one of the things that makes this case extremely unique is that the top is aluminum and it actually acts as the heat sink for the Raspberry Pi. So you can actually see that kind of piece that sticks up right here. That's what's going to interface with the Raspberry Pi. Supposedly this will allow you to overclock it uh, really high and not have any thermal throttling issues. We can also see the PCB that will interface with the headers on our Raspberry Pi. It's important to note this only works with the Raspberry Pi 4. They haven't made any for any other versions. Uh, I don't know if they're planning on it or not. There's also a little power button right here um, that can be remapped to anything you want just through the GPIO, but if you press it, it'll be able to power cycle or shut down through a Cooler Master script that you can load on your Raspberry Pi, and I'll show you how to do that later in the video. It's also important for me to note that I bought this with my own money. A Cooler Master did not sponsor this in any way. We're gonna test a couple different cooling configurations with uh, Raspberry Pi Stress, and I will show you that in a moment, but I wanna see how this thing performs. So we're gonna run this with absolutely no cooling at base clock. Uh, I usually keep this in a 3D printed case here, so I'm just gonna set it inside of this with nothing on top, give it most access to air, best chance with absolutely no cooling. I'm going to put um, the cover on, which actually does have a fan built into it on, on this one. This is a nice little 3D printed cover that I, I found on uh, Thingiverse. So we'll see how a little bit of active cooling helps keep this cool during uh, during stress test. Um, and then finally we'll put the, the Pi Case 40 on with the thermal pad, but I'm interested to see how well it would behave with some um, Arctic MX4. So we're gonna try that as well. All right, let's get this booted into um, Raspbian and let's see what happens. So I wanted to show you how to put the Raspberry Pi inside of the Pi Case 40. The first thing to do is to actually pull your SD card out. It can get caught on the Pi Case as you're putting it in. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pop the case open from the bottom. Once you're inside, you're going to grab your thermal pad. You're going to peel off the blue side and stick it on the extrusion on the Pi Case 40 itself and then you'll peel off the back plastic as well. Sometimes this is a little finicky. Try not to get any oils on the thermal pad if you can. If you're using thermal paste, just use uh, just a little bit. Uh, I use about half of a pea size on here when I'm using thermal paste. Once that's in, take your Raspberry Pi, flip it over, and line up the pins. Make sure that your thermal pad stays on. If you look very closely in there, you can kind of see where the pins are getting lined up. and then gently push. Once it's all the way in, you're gonna grab the back case and you're gonna snap that back on. Watch the IO on this side, it will try and get caught on that IO.
Once that's in, there's four holes here, and then you've got four screws, and you've got your Allen key. I'm gonna use my iFixit screwdriver to make this a little bit faster. Remember to screw in crosswise. You're trying to tension down a thermal pad. You wanna make sure that it's gonna be correctly tensioned and isn't gonna have any irregular torque. So tighten everything just a little bit. Don't over tighten right now. Once you've got everything screwed down, go back around and give everything another turn-ish until you feel it get just a little bit tight. Once that's done, you can pop up in this flap, put your SD card back in, and you're good to go. Here's the first set of results that I recorded. These were taken with a clock of 1500 MHz in the Raspberry Pi 4, which is the default clock. The blue line is no cooling, and it reached a maximum temperature of almost 80 degrees C. The orange line was the fan, which performed significantly better, only reaching a maximum temperature of about 64 degrees C. The thermal pad and the thermal paste, represented by the gray line and yellow line respectively, performs better than the fan and both about equal to each other, only reaching a maximum temperature of about 56 degrees C. Here's where the results get a little bit interesting. I overclocked the Raspberry Pi 4 by 30%, which reached a clock speed of 1950 MHz. The blue data represents the thermal pad with the Pi Case 40, and the orange data represents the thermal paste. The thermal paste outperformed the thermal pad by about 20 degrees in this testing. I think this is happening because the thermal pad only has so much thermal conductivity, where the thermal paste has a significantly improved thermal conductivity. And because of that, especially at a 30% overclock, the chip is producing significantly more heat much faster. So the thermal paste, especially when overclocked, is going to perform much better than the thermal pad. Finally, I compared all of the data. As you can see, even with the overclock, the Pi Case 40 outperformed the base clock Raspberry Pi with absolutely no cooling. And when using thermal paste, the overclocked Pi Case 40 also outperformed the base clock fan-cooled Raspberry Pi. All right, next let's talk about the Cooler Master tool that they're shipping with the Pi Case 40. So you can download this directly from their website. It's going to be under your Start Menu, Accessories, Cooler Master Pi tool. Let's take a little bit to open up here. This is kind of the command center for your Raspberry Pi, especially with the Cooler Master case. They have uh, one-click overclocking here, so you can immediately go to a 10%, 20%, or 30% overclock if you want to, just by clicking one of these buttons. Uh, you can monitor your core temp, your core frequency, your system load, and your memory usage. And then finally, you can map that button that's on the outside of the Pi case. So in order to add button maps here, we'll click this Add button. And then we've got short press and long press. We're actually gonna drag the sequence we want into this bar up here. So I'll do a long press. And I'll have that open a browser. We're gonna go to So if I click the button, and there we go. We've landed on the SNR Tech Bytes page. So what are my final thoughts? I think the Pi Case 40 is an impressive little device. Uh, I do think that there are a couple caveats to it though. For one, if you wanted to use this in a, an application like in your backpack or in a pocket, this plate really needs to be exposed to the air. It actually gets quite hot, especially if the Raspberry Pi is overclocked. It, it, when I was overclocked and I was running my stress tests, which are synthetic loads, it was getting too hot to touch. Uh, in a pocket, I can imagine that would not be exactly pleasant. Um, second, I think that their software needs a lot of work. Um, I think it's getting there, and again, this is still a brand new device. They've got time to work on the software but it just, it's not quite there yet to be a comfortable experience. The overclocking works pretty well, the button mapping uh, keeps crashing and having issues, and the response time from the button press is, is quite low. I'm not certain that's on purpose or if that's just something weird in the software, but I think it's something that could definitely be improved in the future. As for the rest of the case, I think it's a really great construction. I think the ideal deployment for this is actually mounting it with the included VESA adapters to the back of a monitor and having it as a headless unit to run some type of kiosk mode, a user interface, uh, maybe even a touchscreen device that lets users play with it that needs a little bit more load where overclocking a Raspberry Pi 4 would allow you to take advantage of that, but now you don't need a complicated cooling system because this is a self-contained all-in-one unit. Thanks for watching. Bye.